is Daily Blast Live. We're talking about what you're talking about. You all ready for this? Mm -hmm. dun, 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 dun. This is a <laughs> sham. No. No. Nope. Just stop. Get real. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to DBL. It is good to see and we're so grateful for everyone joining us here today. Let's get right into it because there were 13 uh, at least more mass shootings over the weekend. 13 leaving 12 people dead in Philadelphia. You can see people running for their lives. Here they go after multiple gunmen multiple opened on a fire open fire. Excuse me on a crowded street. Three people died. 13 people were injured in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Three people were killed after a shooting outside of a nightclub. Now, those are just two of them. There were others in Arizona, South Carolina, Texas, Nebraska, Virginia, Kentucky, Georgia, Michigan, and New York. So what are we going to do about it? Well, a new CBS poll shows that a majority of Americans support gun restrictions. 81% favor background checks on all potential gun buyers. 72% support a federal red flag law and 62% support a ban on the AR-15 semi-automatic automatic. That ban on semi-automatic automatic weapons was the closest. Uh, so DBL Nation, we want to know what you think. Do you support a ban on assault weapons like this? Go to DBL vote.com to weigh in. Uh, what was your thoughts after hearing about the weekend? And are you worried about going out anymore? Yeah, is this what the summer is going to look like? I mean, I went right? to Top Gun and I counted the seats to my exit. And I counted where the exit was. I have never done that. And I know I've been privileged not to have to be able to do that. I've never done that. In case in the dark, I had to count where the seats were. Yeah, I mean, to listen, we're, I think everyone's asking, how do we solve this? How do we stop this? It's already way out of control. I mean, just you reading all those states right? is like, you, there's so many, we can't even cover them, right? But these are seem like logical answers to kind of put some, you know, distance between having a gun and being crazy, right? right? It's right. like, we're not taking away anybody's guns. We have to stop with all that. Nobody's taking away your guns. Let's just make it harder for bad people to get them. I mean, it seems very, very logical. I don't even understand how Congress is not seeing that, right? I get the NRA funds a lot of the things. That's how government works, but it's like, we're not taking away your guns. We're just making it harder. Is, is there that much money in guns? Yeah, that, yeah I was going like to that talk much about money, money? Erica. It's like, yes. I mean, that it's so telling how much money is actually yeah. behind all of this. Because when you're saying the majority of Americans actually, regardless of political parties, agree on this. Right. Um, it really, it's not shock. None of this is shocking because look at what's happened the past two and a half years. It's like there is this mentality. Okay, we have, we're in a pandemic. Okay, well, it doesn't affect me, so I don't care about it or it's not real or it hasn't gotten to my neighborhood it hasn't gotten to my home and then as it went on and on it started to get into your community your neighborhood your home people you knew started dying there were all of these things that made it more like we are in this together mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. the same things happening right now except we're sitting back and going hey we actually could come up with some solutions there is a vaccine for this but we're just unwilling to get together and make this happen and the truth is like America we we are the teenagers. Um, right, we're new. The, we're the teenagers we're of the world. Yep. Okay, so we're based on rebellion. Everybody wants their freedom. Everyone wants to be seen and be heard. And I agree, people should have their freedom. They should be seen and be heard. But right now, we're in the situation where, like, it's not borders based on states. It's not borders based on communities. It's borders based on one house to the next, mm -hmm. one apartment to the next, mm -hmm. where people are so far apart on these issues that we can't come together to save each other. Exactly. Wow. Wow, that was very well said. I, I, it made me think of COVID because it's like an epidemic now, a public health crisis, just like COVID. I will say the good news is Senator Chris Murphy, who was the senator in Connecticut during Newtown, says he's never heard bipartisan talks like he's hearing in closed chambers. It's the most in Sandy Hook that they're moving. So hopefully we're going to get some kind of compromise. Yeah. Hopefully, it hopefully, just hopefully. seems logical, right? 81% of Americans don't I, agree we... on anything except golden retrievers. What are we doing? <laughs> Fix it. I'm sorry. The poll says, do you support a ban on assault weapons? 83 3% of you, not surprising. 17% of you do not. All right, we do have an update. Why? I, I know we're going to move on. Because I'll tell you why. why. Second Amendment, and they'll tell you and quote it, 
their rights shall not be infringed. And when you put in any kind of slow down obstacle to them, that reads you're infringing what on are, my rights. To the 17% out there, what are you thinking when you see these families that are dead, that no longer have their sons, that this family of four that the mother was killed and the dad died of a heart attack? What Do you have any empathy for any of these people? Oh, the 13 people were shot, the 13 different shootings. Like, where is the empathy? Do you really, do you really Really, like, make love to your gun? Like, what do you, I don't I understand. I think they think the Second Amendment I don't is, understand. they believe it's absolute and more important, their constitutional right, than the rights of those but that are But when you see killed. those families, like, aren't you like, hey, I'll do my part. Because I, I just don't, I'm so also, confused. Because I think when pe some people don't want to give even an inch because they feel like the mile will be taken mm, from them. Mm. Like, I am a responsible gun owner. I have said that before. When yeah. I got certified and or I did my tactical training, I trained with police officers. Like, I had an understanding. We walked through the home. Mm. An understanding of what my responsibility was with this weapon. Sure. If, the, if all the laws change and they were like, hey, you need to give this back for this reason or we're gonna buy it back from you, I would be the first person in line. Right. Like, I don't understand the resistance right. when we're talking about responsible gun ownership. America is gun crazy. We are built on guns. We are gun fanatics. I mean, we really are. Uh, we do have an update on the school shooting in Texas. This Uvalde mom is now saying police are warning her to stop telling her story or else she'll be charged with a probation violation for obstruction of justice. Now, during the shooting, she was handcuffed by police after begging them to rescue her kids. Once the handcuffs were off, she did a mom thing. She jumped over the fence, ran in and saved her two sons. This funeral home worker is also speaking out about the police response. He witnessed the gunman crash his truck. He went for help, but the gunman opened fire and ran into the school. The worker says he was prepared to confront the gunman with his own gun when police told him to stop. Now, we're hearing a lot about this Uvalde. I just want to let you know 40% of the budget of Uvalde goes to security. 40%. The man we are hearing from the New York Times, Arredondo, the man who called it a barricaded hostage situation, had no radio on him the entire time. He didn't know kids were being shot because he didn't he have his radio. Have ears? Yeah. Apparently he and, and 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 the people that did go in heard the shots and the last things they heard as they went in was do not breach. And they went against what the people what Arredondo said. What do you guys make of this? Well, they Botched it. I was going to use another word, but yeah, they they botched it, right? Why isn't he fired? Why isn't he? He he definitely should be, but again, I think this is like nobody think it's coming to their home, right? Nobody think they're going to be in this situation, right? And they're all like, they just had training too on what Two to do. Two months ago, right? So Two it's like they ago. had proper training on what to do, but I think when it hits you you don't know what to do, then, right? It's that fight or flight, right. he messed up. But then they had a school council meeting, right? This was just yesterday, I believe it was yesterday. And they basically didn't bring him up, didn't discuss him, even though two people got up, they wanted him fired. No discussion about him at all. What's going on in Uvalde? And didn't he run for something after? Like He the, was you know, elected to city council. Yeah, he had after. Already, he had already been voted in. They had oh, just elected okay, him. Okay. I want to make that clear. Sorry. But yeah, go yeah. ahead. But they went through and like actually <laughs> put him on. The yeah. City Behind council. closed doors. Right. That's right. right. Um, yeah, I, I, there's there's no excuse for this. In fact, it's embarrassing. Like, honestly, I don't know how this man could ever sleep at night ever again in his life. Thank you. Um, the idea that we aren't or he isn't coming out to just hold himself accountable and responsible it also tells you, like in certain towns, in certain cities in this country, how things are really operating. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at how the country as a whole operates, and it's all about who has the power construct. It doesn't mean anything to anyone who isn't sitting in one of those seats or receiving 40% of that funding. I totally agree, and what I thought was interesting is only two people felt the need or felt comfortable enough to sign up to speak at that city council. I wonder how that town is run, is all I'm saying. Speculation on my part, but is there a fear there that they can't go to those people? Well, a court, a Allegedly, there has been people who have been absolutely um, threatened by yeah. coming forward, yeah. including this allegedly the this woman yeah. um, who saved her children. You're right. Coming up on DBL, um, several professional baseball players, maybe you guys have heard of this, take a stand against wearing pride logos on their uniforms. Is there any problem with them saying no? Plus, what was Brad Pitt like before his Thelma and Louise days? We talk with an A-list acting coach, Margie Haber, about what it was like working with him before he got big. Closed captioning provided by...
This June, DBL isn't holding back. I've already spent my time and all of my sanity on trying to make you happy. I like a little cheese in my potatoes. That <laughs> wasn't going on right That's what we need more of, conversations in this country. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> DBL is all new every day. Uh, we want to support our girl, Lindsey Granger. You again. Can you check me a little bit for me? It's like the wires. Oh, we're off. I am? Yes. I'm back? Yes. Oh my god. It's pretty hot in here, isn't it? It's I so hot, it's like a bayou. Orchids are coming out of my mouth. Sorry. I thought that'd be funny, and then as I was in the middle of it, I was like, I should have stopped. Anyway, we went to a really good place in Fort Collins, Denver. I don't know if you guys have been. It's called Intercept Brewing, and they had dogs and flowers and games and board games and really good people. And I just, I Amazing. went to Fort Collins. Did you? And I've never been, it's only And it's a college town? Very much so, and yes. what college is there? Uh, CSU Fort Collins. Okay, now mm -hmm. I get U of D and DU. Mm -hmm. Like, CU is actually University of Colorado. Yes. Not Colorado University. Which is also very weird. Ooh, all of these are wet still, so we're gonna do something very, very intriguing here. Really? Conversation. <laughs>
I, I, don't, I, mean, I don't know how much communication you're going to have with those pitchers. No, I mean just in terms of the but fact if they're that they welcoming, if they're welcoming. Because that's an action in itself, right? Not wearing it is in itself an, an action. Right, but I'm, I'm not down with this 100% all in or no. Right. You know what I mean? Like if you have one question, even if you're very welcoming to whatever the conversation may be, you, you're all you're labeled. You're, you're just immediately labeled. You're homophobic, you're racist, you're this, you're It's like, hey, wait a second. I'm supportive of that. This is just what I feel like. Don't you respect my opinions as well? I have to respect yours can you respect mine hmm. I think where um, you know our co-host Al says this a lot and I truly believe it that when you are up for cancellation or you speak out and it's unpopular that it's really just showing who your demographic and who your following is and so I think ultimately a lot of these things speak through dollars and revenue mm. um, are you likely to purchase a jersey with one of those names on right. it if someone in your family sure. this is affecting and you're offended or are you likely to purchase it because you're like yeah this person represents me and my ideology and I think that really comes out in the wash it comes out <laughs> in the audit I should say and in the audit. I will yeah. also say this is what they said. I want to give some context. The Tampa Bay. The Tampa Bay race. pitchers. Yeah, they said um, this is Jason Adam saying why he doesn't want to wear it. He said, but when we put it on our bodies, I think a lot of guys decided that it's just a lifestyle that maybe not that they look down on anybody or think differently. It's just that maybe we don't want to encourage it if we believe in Jesus, who's encouraged us to live a lifestyle that would abstain from that behavior. And I want to say from my point of view, I don't believe it's a lifestyle. I believe that's factually incorrect. And I wanted to make sure that his context was also given yeah as well. I, I, listen I'm a, I would wear the ribbon I'd wear the patch or I'd do whatever you know what I mean some people don't I, I don't know you're, you're saying it's okay to have the protest in that way it's not even a protest like I don't know I'd better just shut up I'm already homophobic already so. you are not yeah. you are not coming up on CBL our interview with Hollywood's number one acting coach Margie Haber what was it like working with Brad Pitt before he became famous stay tuned this You may have seen headlines or claims like these. U.S. COVID cases six times higher than last year. COVID cases are five times higher now than last Memorial Day weekend. But is it true? Let's verify. Our sources are the CDC, the North Carolina Health Department, and Forsyth County Public Health Director Josh Swift. We checked the national and state numbers. We're looking at case numbers from May 26, 2021 which is the last business day before the holiday weekend. Nationwide, there were just over 23,000 new cases. On May 26 this year, it's more than 124,000 cases. That's about 5.3 times higher than last year. We get updated state numbers every Wednesday. On the Wednesday before Memorial Day last year, 802 cases were reported. This year, it's just over 28,000 cases. That's about 35 times higher and those numbers may not even show the whole picture. You talk to a lot of people uh, that say they had COVID, but they did it through an at-home test. So that's uh, so our numbers, what we're showing on our website is still not the true number because that doesn't include at-home tests. But experts say case numbers don't tell the whole story. Hospitalizations are a better gauge. Around this time last year, the state reported 25% of COVID patients were hospitalized about 600 people. This year, it's down 10%, about 500 people. So we can verify, yes, COVID cases nationwide are five times higher than last year. At the state level, they're 35 times higher, but hospitalizations haven't budged. Welcome back to DBL. Margie Haber is an acting coach for some of Hollywood's biggest stars, and she has one piece of advice for everyone, and that is bleep your comfort zone. Earlier, she told us about working with Brad Pitt and Tiffany Haddish. Check it out. Please welcome Hollywood's <laughs> number one acting coach, Margie Haber. Yeah. Oh my God. I love, I love the 
way you covered up the uh, the, the, the word. It's very, I, I love it. And you all, I, and by the way, I've been watching all of you, and you all have the opportunity to, to study with me because you all have talent. I can see oh my God, it. She Every said one it. of you. Sam. Yeah, you could be the stars. The stars what? in the Marcy Haber said. studio. She said yeah. it. I noticed it. You've worked yes. with some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Mariska Hargitay, Josh Jumel, mm -hmm. Halle Berry. I yes. know I'm not telling you anything. I'm just telling our viewers, right? <laughs> We all know right, these correct. people. So how do you peel back all of the layers and find the, quote, it factor? Everybody, including you, has an it factor. In fact, I think you're also charismatic. I've watched your show, and I'm very impressed with it because you're having a blast. Oh. And that's, that's the, that's, yes, you're having a blast. And that's the thing, guys, you know, all the stars I've worked with, you know, I, uh, there's, there's something about them that's special. There, there's vulnerability. But the problem is that most people hide behind their masks, they hide behind their armor because they're so afraid to be seen. Then, uh, then it happens when you wear the armor, like in my book, and there's a chapter called, Does Your Armor Serve You? Mm. And quite honestly, it doesn't. So when you move the walls and remove the critical parent and, that, and the fearful child, this beautiful thing comes out. So Marjorie, this is, too. this is a <laughs> yeah. big moment for me, and I think I'm getting a little emotional. Stop <laughs> it! <laughs> I, like that. I was showing my range. You're I was showing my range. For Margie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you do Come Brad. To Hollywood. <laughs> Hollywood. You do Brad Pitt before Thelma and Louise. He was one of your students, like a, a long list of many names we just mentioned. What was BP? Yeah. What was BP like before stardom? BP. <laughs> He was charming, just like you. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Um, he walked in with an air of confidence. I think you know the thing about him that was wonderful is that he made me feel special. So Aww. to me, when you when you feel special about yourself, and then you can make other people feel special, then you you quite honestly you really are um, this the star of your own life, right? And he and he was. And I, I thought that when I worked with him um, on Thelma and Louise, and he had that. You know, the hair dry in his hand, and he brought out what I call the playful child. You know, everybody is, a, some people are afraid of the playful child. He was never afraid of it. Mm. He was always available to, the twinkle was always there. It was my job to let him bring it through and, and allow himself to remove any walls that he has and trust the relationship. Because I think if you trust relationships, that's when you can bring that stuff out. And uh, he was uh, beautiful and still is, and very sweet. Aww. That was great. That was beautiful. Like a, yeah. In your book, you write Maybe about not. your theory uh, my five voices and I wanted yeah. to know a little bit more about that and was there a notable student of yours that maybe had struggled a bit with this I heard well I, this is one of my favorite parts of the book blink your comfort zone I have to get used to saying that word but anyway what's beautiful about this book is that you get to look at the five voices within us you know the critical parent that's the voice that says I'm not good enough I'm too fat I'm too old you know I'm sure you all recognize that voice You're talking but to then me. there's a ner yes I'm talking to you I'm talking to you uh, then there's a nurturing parent which is just uh, the beautiful part of your voice that says you know what Margie you're not that old you're a beautiful person I love you it's so important that voice is really underused there's a student of mine I believe you know her name is Tiffany Haddish. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. In we, fact, heard yes, she, we heard she ready. Yes. <laughs> She's just brilliant. And what, what she came, when she came to me, she was all about, um, I don't want to give up my playful child, Margie, because I like to play, girl. I'm not going to be what you want me to be. I'm not going to be that sad, <laughs> painful person. I want you to come out. And, no, I said, you know, but there's more to you, Tiffany, than that. There's this beautiful piece of you that I'm so proud of you. It's the vulnerability. Yeah. So she had to actually get she had to let go of her playful child oh, wow. and not use it and to protect her. Many of us do that. We protect our fearful child with the playful child. We loved Ooh, having you, right? Margie. To all of our viewers out there, hello. Yes. You can pick up a copy of Bleep Your Comfort Zone, fill in the blank, to take a risk and become the lead in your own life. Mm. Thank you so much, Margie. I love you, yes. Margie. <laughs> I love you, Margie. I'll come to you. Zoom it, zoom it. We'll zoom together. Promotional consideration is brought to you by. So let's verify, does federal law really protect gun manufacturers from being sued? Our sources here are a trio of law professors. We also looked to the law in question, the 2005 Protection of Lawful Commerce in Arms Act, called PLACA for short. And we read through a Congressional Research Service paper. Let's start with PLACA. It was created in part to prevent civil lawsuits against, quote, manufacturers, distributors, dealers, and importers of firearms or ammunition products for the harm solely caused by the criminal or unlawful misuse of firearms products or ammunition products. 
So if you're shot by a person who criminals, criminally misuses a weapon, um, this law would block you from suing a firearms manufacturer. But there are exceptions. If you buy a firearm that is defective, if you knowingly transfer a firearm, knowing that that firearm will be used to commit a crime of violence. You can sue when there is an allegation that the uh, manufacturer or dealer violated an underlying statute, either a federal or a state statute, that is, quote, applicable to the sale or marketing of firearms. And we just saw this play out in 2015. The families of nine Sandy Hook victims sued gunmaker Remington for the way they marketed the weapon used in that mass shooting. The allegation by the families was that Bushmaster was marketing uh, this gun to be used for offensive, violent conduct. In February, Remington settled for $73 million. But I don't think it really resolved the ultimate legal question as to just how big an exception is this to the federal immunity shield. So we can verify that, yes, a 2005 law does protect gun makers from being civilly sued simply because their guns are used in a crime. However, it's not complete immunity, and some states have laws giving even more immunity to manufacturers than PLACA. With your Verify, I'm Adam Longo. It can be a little jarring when you're stopped at a red light and your car's engine suddenly stops as well. Many new gas-powered vehicles come with a start-stop feature that kills the engine when you're sitting still. An 11 Live viewer wants to know if there's a significant gas savings and if the feature leads to wear and tear on your vehicle starter. So let's verify. Our sources are Jim Castle with AAA and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Castle tells us that the intent of the feature is to save gas. They found all different ways, lighter oil, lighter parts, start-stop technology. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's there to save fuel, without a doubt. AAA tested the start-stop feature on three different vehicles and found the feature improved fuel efficiency as much as 7%. The EPA is a little less encouraging, estimating the savings at anywhere from 4 to 5%. But what about wear and tear on the starter? Castle says the feature does put more pressure on the starter, but the cost shouldn't outweigh the savings on fuel. We've definitely, you know, seen a couple of issues, not many at all. You probably won't see starter issues for, you know, years. So we can verify it's true. The start-stop feature will save you money on fuel, outweighing any issues that may arise with added pressure on your vehicle's starter. Welcome back. Everyone loves winning things and scammers know this. So it's time for security alert sponsored by LifeLock. There are many legitimate sweepstakes out there, but you need to watch out for scammers. They will reach out to you by phone, email or mail congratulating you for winning this big prize. But the red flag is that they will request that you pay a fee or send personal information to claim it. You should never send money or provide financial information to receive a prize. If your information has been breached, LifeLock is here to help. LifeLock keeps you and your digital identity secure from cyber criminals. Call 1-800-353-8940 or visit LifeLock.com to learn more. But someone who is winning is this guy because we want to wish you a very happy belated birthday, Jeffrey. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How yes. was your birthday yesterday? 44. 65? Yeah. Very good. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>